that's like the only thing in my mind is like, don't make this pipe look like a dick. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Daily Sesh. Today we've got Stizzle on the torch. You might have seen him from the last video, the homeblown glass, Arizona. He's been blowing glass. How long have you been blowing glass for him? About six years. Six years. So he definitely knows what he's doing. And today we're going to teach you how to make a glass pipe. Let's check it out. Right now I'm just getting the blank pot. I'm going to open this up and fume some gold and silver inside. I'm using some contracts tubing. So when I fume the inside and melt it all down, there's ridges that are inside the tubing that are going to grab the fume. And it's going to stick to that and make it look like lines all the way throughout the tubing once it's all melted in. I'm going to fume half of it gold and then fume all of it silver. That way it gives it like a nice rainbow effect. And you're doing that inside of the tube? Yeah. Why? That way, see those ridges that are on the inside of the glass right there? When the fume grabs onto those ridges and once it all melts down, those are gonna turn into lines on the inside of the tubing. So it's just using the optics of the glass that already exists to create like a pattern that are, uh, that I can later, you know, manipulate and turn into something that's like really pretty. So you just use gold? Yeah, that was just a piece of gold that I stuck on the end of a glass rod and put it in front of the flame and superheated it and that vaporized it and uh, the way that the boro works, once that's all like melted in and you start smoking out of it and it builds up a layer of resin in that pipe, it actually like changes the color of it. And uh, the first dude to ever figure that out, his name was Bob Snodgrass. And he was like, uh, first dude to ever make color changing glass pipes and he'd sell them on the Grateful Dead lot and that's how the whole entire glass market became was because this guy accidentally figured out that if he fumed gold or silver onto glass that if you would smoke out of it by blocking the light passing through the fuming in the glass it would change the color of it it would go from being like uh like a yellowish gold color to like a really nice purple or a really nice blue. So you're using both colors? Yep, gold and silver. And when you use them in the right proportions too, you can actually get like a full rainbow spectrum out of just the gold and silver, you know? It's pretty cool. And can you use any type of gold and silver? Um, I don't know specifically what this stuff is, but the purer it is, the better it's going to be. So right now I'm just cooking out all the excess fume because I don't want too much on there or else it'll be really, really cloudy and it won't look that good once it's all melted in. You kind of want a real light layer on there. So now that I got all the fume that I want, I'm gonna close this end up and start making my pipe. So this is the prep before the pipe? Yep, this is just getting the piece ready so it uh, actually has like some color to it in the end result. You know, it's not just a clear spoon at the end of the day, it's, it's got a little bit of color. Well, not necessarily color since it's gold and silver, but it won't just be clear, you know? And over time, it'll change colors too, and that's that's always like a really, really nice process to enjoy when you own a pipe, at least in my opinion. That was always like my favorite thing. Uh, back in the day, getting like a, a fucking fume pipe and watching it change colors and and fill in really nice, so. 
that's why I enjoy making the uh, fume pipes for sure. Because it's definitely like an ode to, to Bob and, and him starting the whole entire glass pipe movement in America. And they also just so happen to be like my favorite pipe from when I was just a little stoner, you know, so that's always fucking cool. So now you're closing up the tube. Yeah, I close the tube up. I got a handle on the end now, so that way I can uh, heat it all up and taper it down, because right now it's it's a really large diameter. I just want this to be, you know, like this will be a, a pocket piece at the end of the day, something that you can just take around anywhere with you or travel with you. The way this tubing comes naturally, it's a lot thinner than most tubing is that I would make a pipe out of. So you got to condense it a little bit. So that's what I'm getting ready to do right now. I'm putting my handle on it just to make sure that it's perfectly straight just to make my life easier when I go to condense this whole piece right here. Cause I gotta go from like, this is probably like 38 mil, I'm probably gonna take it down to like 12 mil or something. So I like don't know. Half the size? Yeah, probably. As far as I can take it down before it, it gets away from me, you know? So. And that makes the pipe thicker, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm gonna thicken it up a lot. That's the whole point of this process, because, I mean, I could make a pipe that's not as thick, but, you know, you wanna be able to have something that's gonna be able to fall out of your pocket or... Throw it at the wall. Yeah, that too. <laughs> you know, it's gotta take a couple slams. So I like to make them thick, for sure. That's what she said. So yeah, right now I'm really just trying to focus all my heat into this and, and gather it all together. That way when I go to pull it down, it's a nice even heat base. And I don't pull too much glass to one side or the other. It's all nice and evenly heated and just wants to flow together like it's all one piece. When you first started blowing glass, how long did it take before you learned how to make a pipe? Um, I don't know, I was making really janky pipes when I first started. But it was probably a couple years of doing it every day before I was really making pipes that I liked, that I was like proud of. Because a lot of them were just like turds, you know? But you gotta make a bunch of turds before you can get good. So basically you're just pushing it together? Yeah, I'm pushing my hands together to gather all this glass up because that whole tube was only about a millimeter thick, maybe like one and a half millimeters thick. It was really thin. So I needed to condense all of that before I go to pull it down to turn it into a spoon. So that's what that whole process was. I got a nice little football right here that I can begin to start working down. How do you know when it's done? Just by judging um, the inside walls of the bubble. Now, all the ridges except for like right in there pretty much all melted out and it's just the fume that was hanging on to the ridges that's remaining so i can turn my flame down a little bit and kind of just concentrate my flame onto the arch of this uh this sphere right here the reason why i pulled it down into uh, into a football shape is to make it easier for me to pull it down later because it gets my handle further away from this mass in the center that's gonna get really, really hot. And if that gets really hot, my handle's gonna get all floppy and it won't be straight. And you don't want that. You're gonna french fry when you're supposed to pizza. Have a bad time. So now that I got this all heated up and where I want it, I'm gonna start tapering this pipe 
and it's actually going to start looking like a pipe now instead of just like a blob because I got everything hot and nice and gathered to where I want it to be. And now it's going to be a really nice thick pipe that'll last potentially a lifetime if, if you don't ever drop it. So. Give that a nice, even heat and taper. So you're like literally pulling on that thing? Yeah. Not like really hard though, it's like, it's more of like a finesse than like yanking on it. Cause when it gets molten hot like that, it moves real quick. So I'm just, when I'm dipping my elbows, back and forth like that, I'm really trying to use the gravity and just the natural weight of the tubing itself to get it to do what I want to do. And then once it's kind of like set, that's when I kind of like give it a little tug or start to yank on it. Right now I'm gonna condense a small area for the mouthpiece, that way when I go to take it off the handle, I have less material to remove. And it just makes it a little bit easier at that end process for me to get this off of here and put it into the kiln. Now I'm going to heat up the front and blow out the bowl. Are you just condensing it right now? or I'm heating it all up because I'm going to spiral it a little bit and give this a nice little pattern. But yeah, it's condensing. I'm going to blow this all back out. Now what are you doing? Taking my handle off and then I'm going to blow this, this bowl out a little bit more and actually push my bowl, pop the carb, and put a little flat spot on here so that way it doesn't roll off the table. Now I'm going to heat this all up and pancake it out a little bit instead of being so spherical. So now that I got the bowl shaped, I can pop, pop the hole and get ready to pop or push the bowl. Be careful. Women are all liars. You should know that. Just like that, you blow into it. Yeah. Uh, puff into it when it's red hot in the flame and that pressure from you blowing into it and it being molten hot you just pop a hole right here and you heat up all the way around how deep do you go <laughs> But seriously, how deep do you go? <laughs> um, like, how do you know when to stop? Honestly, it um, just depends on how deep you want the bowl to be. Like, you definitely don't want to push this, push the bowl down into the other side. Like, I try and do it like halfway, really. Like, that way the hole ends up halfway down the chamber, you know? That's what I try and shoot for. I'm going to add a little glob of clear for the carb, pop a hole for the carb, 
and then put a little flat spot on it. Why do you put that on there? It just makes the carb a little bit bigger than it would normally be if you didn't add some material. Who taught you that one? I actually learned it from Freddie. Now I'm gonna heat up a spot on the bottom of this to flatten it, that way it doesn't roll off the table. And put it in the kiln for a few minutes and then I'll be able to take it off the handle. You just push down? Yeah, real lightly too. You know, you don't have to push super hard since the glass is molten. Putting it in the kiln. Yep, let it sit in the kiln for a few minutes and then I'll take it off the handle. Why are you putting it in the kiln? It brings everything up to temperature. Um, I was working on the front of that pipe for a little while and the back end could have got a little cold, so I just don't want to risk it cracking before taking it off the handle. So that'll bring it all up to temp and make everything hot and okay to fuck with. Okay, I'm just getting this ready to tear off the glass from the pipe. I like to, I don't like using the ends that you like cut up because sometimes when you put it into the flame they explode and shoot shards at your piece or whatever. So I just like to melt it off and make it like nice and round when I go to take this piece off the handle. Just getting the claws warm, that way they don't crack the hot pipe when I grab the pipe with the claws. Wipe off any kiln dust that might have gotten on it while it was sitting in there. And this is the final step. You're gonna take the rod off the pipe? Yep. Gonna remove this handle, and it'll just be a pipe left over. Right now, I'm just heating up the very tip of this. So that way I can pluck out a gather and thin out this glass as much as possible till it eventually just opens up. You can just pluck it open once it gets thin enough. That's why I condensed it earlier to, to make this point a little bit easier. Oop, it's coming out of my handles now. Ooh, that looks scary. Oh, you grabbed it. <laughs> and it's open. So this is a reamer? Yep, just gonna make this opening as even as possible and that's it. Yeah, it's done. Ooh. And so this is a fumed pipe out of scallop glass, or what else did you call it? Yeah, scallop tubing or contracts tubing. And it's from gold to silver. And gold and silver have two different colors. And you just put it in the kiln and it's gonna sit there for how long? Um, overnight. Overnight. Yeah. And after that, it's good to go. Yes, sir. How much would one of those pipes sell at a smoke shop for? 
Probably like 20 bucks. 20 bucks. And how long does it normally take you to make a pipe like that? Uh, about 20 minutes. If I don't have any of the material prepped up, it's a lot quicker if you have, you know, this tubing already fumed and ready to go. <clears throat> so the more prep you can do, the quicker that you can get it made, the faster it'll be. And the more you make, the faster you'll get also. That's sick. Where can people find you on Instagram? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Stizzle, S-T-I-Z-L-E. You're from Tempe? Uh, or you work out at Tempe? I live in Tempe. I was raised in like Mesa, so I've pretty much been in Maricopa Valley or Maricopa County like my whole life. So. What are you making these days when you're on the torch over here? Um, whatever I want pretty much. I've been making some jammers. Um, recently, I like to make a lot of dry pipes, Sherlock's hammers, anything like that, beads, um, anything really, anything that comes to mind. There's not really anything that I try to stick to to make like a lot of. Do you have a favorite style or anything that you've been doing lately? I like making hammers. Well, hammers? Yeah, hammer pipes. Why? Um, just the way they look and um, how fun they are to put together. I just feel like um, a hammer looks a lot like a hot rod, you know. All, all like heady dry pieces are kind of like little hot rods in their own selves. So I just like that, that whole element. Even though I'm um, not really into cars or anything like that, it's just cool. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> so what's next for you then? Do you have any like um, big goals or like ambitions you want to work towards? Blow more glass, blow have more, more fun. Hell yeah. I'm gonna go to Long Beach and skate soon, so that's gonna be tight. You pretty much live the dream. Yeah, yeah, just have a good time. That's what's up. Yeah. So that's gonna be it for today's episode of The Daily Sesh. We got Stizzle wrapping up on a fumed glass pipe. We put it out in the kiln and it'll come out tomorrow. We'll check it out then. And then if you guys like what you see, give us a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. It only helps us to grow bigger and do better things. Until next time, see you guys later.